The Bunch of Grapes by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org Joy, I did lock thee up, but some bad man hath let thee out again, and now, methinks, I am where I began seven years ago, one vogue and vain, one air of thoughts usurps my brain. I did towards Canaan draw, but now I am brought back to the Red Sea, the sea of shame. For as the Jews of old, by God's command, travelled and saw no town, so now each Christian hath his journeys spanned, their story pens and sets us down. A single deed is small renown, God's works are wide, and let in future times His ancient justice overflows our crimes. Then have we too our guardian fires and clouds, Our scripture dew drops fast. We have sands and serpents, tents and shrouds, Alas, our murmurings come not last. But where's the cluster, where's the taste of mine inheritance? Lord, if I must borrow, let me as well take up their joy and sorrow. But can he want the grape who hath the wine? I have their fruit and more. Blessed be God, who prospered Noah's vine, and made it bring forth grapes good store. But much more him I must adore, who of the law's sour juice sweet wine did make, e'en God himself being pressed for my sake. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Unknown by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Dear friend, sit down. The tale is long and sad, and in my faintings I presume your love will more comply than help. A lord I had, and have, of whom some grounds which may improve I hold for two lives, and both lives in me. To him I brought a dish of fruit one day, and in the middle placed my heart. But he, I sighed to say, looked on at a servant, who did not know his eye better than you know me or which is one than I myself. The servant instantly quitting the fruit seized on my heart alone, and threw it in a font, wherein did fall a stream of blood, which issued from the side of a great rock. I well remember all, and have good cause. There it was dipped and dyed, and washed and wrung, the very ringing yet in forthest tears. Your heart was foul, I fear. Indeed, Tis true I did and do commit many a fault more than my lease will bear, yet still asked pardon, and was not denied. But you shall hear. After my heart was well and clean and fair, as I one eventide, I sigh to tell, walked by myself abroad, I saw a large and spacious furnace flaming, and thereon a boiling cauldron, round about whose verge was in great letters set, Affliction the greatness showed the owner. So I went to fetch a sacrifice out of my fold, thinking with that which I did thus present to warm his love, which I did fear grew cold. But as my heart did tender it, the man who was to take it from me slipped his hand and threw my heart into the scalding pan. My heart that brought it, do you understand? The offerer's heart. Your heart was hard, I fear. Indeed, tis true, I found a callous matter began to spread and to expiate there, but with a richer drug than scalding water I bathed it often, even with holy blood, which at a board, while many drank bare wine, a friend did steal into my cup for good, even taken inwardly, and most divine to subtle hardness. But at the length out of the cauldron getting, soon I fled unto my house, where to repair the strength which I had lost, I hasted to my bed, but when I thought to sleep out all these faults, I sighed to speak. I found that some had stuffed my bed with thoughts, I would say thorns. Dear, could my heart not break, when with my pleasures even my rest was gone? Full well I understood who had been there, for
for I'd given the key to none but one. It must be he. Your heart was dull, I fear. Indeed a slack and sleepy state of mind did oft possess me, so that when I prayed, though my lips went, my heart did stay behind. But all my scores were by another paid, who took the debt upon him. Truly, friend, for aught I hear, your master shows to you more favor than you wot of. Mark the end. The font did wonly what was old renew. The cauldron supplied what was grown too hard. The thorns did quicken what was grown too dull. All did but strive to mend what you had marred. Wherefore be cheered and praise him to the full each day, each hour, each moment of the week, who fain would have you be new, tender, quick. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Man's Medley by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Hark how the birds do sing, and woods do ring. All creatures have their joy, and man hath his. Yet if we rightly measure man's joy and pleasure, rather hereafter than in present is. To this life things of sense make their pretense. In the other, angels have a right by birth. Man ties them both alone, and makes them one. With the one hand touching heaven, with the other earth. In soul he mounts and flies, in flesh he dies. He wears a stuff whose thread is coarse and round, but trimmed with curious lace, and should take place after the trimming, not the stuff and ground, not that he may not hear taste of the cheer, but as birds drink, and straight lift up their heads, so he must sip and think of better drink he may attain to after he is dead. But as his joys are double, so is his trouble. He hath two winters, other things but one. Both frosts and thoughts do nip and bite his lip, and he of all things fears two deaths alone. Yet even the greatest griefs may be reliefs, could he but take them right and in their ways? Happy is he whose heart hath found the art to turn his double pains to double praise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Storm by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. If as the winds and waters here below do die and flow, my sighs and tears as busy were above, sure they would move and much affect thee, as tempestuous times amaze poor mortals and object their crimes. Stars have their storms, even in a high degree, as well as we, a throbbing conscience spurred by remorse, hath a strange force. It quits the earth, and mounting more and more, dares to assault thee and besiege thy doors. There it stands knocking, to thy music's wrong, and drowns the song. Glory and honor are set by, till it an answer get. Poets have wronged poor storms, such days are best. They purge the air without, within the breast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Paradise by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. I bless thee, Lord, because I grow among thy trees, which in a row to thee both fruit and order owe. What open force or hidden charm can blast my fruit or bring me harm, while the enclosure is thine arm? Enclose me still, for fear I start. Be to me rather sharp and tart, than let me want thy hand and art. When thou dost greater judgment spare, And with thy knife but prune and pare, Even fruitful trees more fruitful are. Such sharpness shows the sweetest friend, Such cuttings rather heal than rend, And such beginnings touch their end. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Method by George Herbert, read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Poor heart, lament, for since thy God refuses, still there is some rub, some discontent which 
cools his will thy father could quickly effect what thou dost move for he is power and sure he would for he is love go search this thing tumble thy breast and turn thy book if thou hast lost a glove or ring wouldst thou not look what do i see written above there yesterday i did behave me carelessly when i did pray and should god's ear to such indifference chained be who do not their own motions hear is god less free but stay what's there late when i would have something done i had a motion to forbear yet i went on and should god's ears which needs not man be tied to those who hear not him but quickly hear his utter foes then once more pray down with thy knees up with thy voice seek pardon first and god will say glad heart rejoice end of poem this recording is in the public domain Divinity by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. As men, for fear the stars should sleep and nod and trip at night, have spheres supplied, as if a star were duller than a clod, which knows its way without a guide. Just so the other heaven they also serve, divinity's transcendent sky, which with the edge of wit they cut and carve, recent triumphs and faith lies by. Could not that wisdom which first broached the wine have thickened it with definitions, and jagged his seamless coat, had that been fine, with curious questions and divisions? But all the doctrine which he taught and gave was clear as heaven from whence it came, at least those beams of truth which only save, surpass in brightness any flame. Love God, and love your neighbor. Watch and pray. Do as you would be done unto. O oh, dark instructions, even dark as day, who can these Gordian knots undo? But he doth bid us take his blood for wine, bid what he please, yet I am sure to take and taste what he doth there design is all that saves and not obscure. Then burn thy epicycles, foolish man, break all thy spheres and save thy head. Faith needs no staff of flesh, but stoutly can to heaven alone both go and lead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Grieve Not the Holy Spirit by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Ephesians Chapter 4, Verse 30 And art thou grieved, sweet and sacred dove, when I am sour and cross thy love? Grieved for me, the God of strength and power, Grieved for a worm, which, when I tread, I pass away and leave it dead. Then weep, mine eyes, the God of love doth grieve, Weep, foolish heart, and weeping live. For death is dry as dust, yet if ye part, End as the night, whose sable hue your sins express, Melt into dew. When saucy mirth shall knock or call at door, Cry out, get hence, or cry no more. Almighty God doth grieve, he puts on sense. I sin not to my grief alone, but to God's too, he doth groan. O take thy lute, and tune it to a strain which may with thee all day complain. There can be no discord but in ceasing be. Marble can weep, and surely strings more bowels have than such hard things. Lord, I adjudge myself to tears and grief even endless tears, without relief. If a clear spring for me no time forbears, but runs, although I be not dry, I am no crystal, what shall I? Yet if I wail not still, since still to wail nature denies, and flesh would fail, if my deserts were masters of mine eyes, Lord pardon, for thy son makes good my want of tears with store of blood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Family by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org 
what doth this noise of thoughts within my heart as if they had a part what do these loud complaints and pulling fears as if there were no rule or ears but lord the house and family are thine though some of them repine turn out these wranglers which defile thy seat for where thou dwellest all is neat first peace and silence all disputes control then order plays the soul and giving all things their set forms and hours makes of wild woods sweet walks and bowers humble obedience near the door doth stand expecting a command then whom in waiting nothing seems more slow nothing more quick when she doth go joys oft are there and griefs as oft as joys but griefs without a noise yet speak they louder than distempered fears what is so shrill as silent tears this is thy house with these it doth abound and where these are not found perhaps thou comest sometimes for a day but not to make a constant stay end of poem this recording is in the public domain the size by george herbert read for LibriVox.org by suzanne carroll content thee greedy heart modest and moderate joys to those that have title to more hereafter when they part are passing brave let the upper springs into the low descend and fall and thou dost flow what though some have a frout of cloves and nutmegs and in cinnamon sail if thou hast wherewithal to spice a drought when griefs prevail and for the future time art heir to the isle of spices is it not fair to be in both worlds full is more than god was who was hungry here wouldst thou his laws of fasting disannul enact good cheer lay out thy joy yet hope to save it wouldst thou both eat thy cake and have it great joys are all at once but little do reserve themselves for more those have their hopes these what they have renounce and live on score those are at home these journey still and meet the rest on zion's hill thy saviour sentenced joy and in the flesh condemned it as unfit at least in lump for such doth oft destroy whereas a bit doth tice us on to hopes of more and for the present health restore a christian state and case is not a corpulent but a thin and spare yet active strength whose long and bony face content and care do seem to equally divide like a pretender not a bride wherefore sit down good heart grasp not at much for fear thou losest all if comforts fell according to desert at all times fall they would great frosts and snows destroy for we should count since the last joy then close again the seam which thou hast opened do not spread thy robe in hope of great things call to mind thy dream an earthly globe on whose meridian was engraven these seas are tears and heaven the haven end of poem this recording is in the public domain artillery by george herbert read for librivox.org by suzanne carroll 
As I one evening sat before my cell, Methought a star did shoot into my lap. I rose and shook my clothes, As knowing well that from small fires Comes oft no small mishap. When suddenly I heard one say, Do as thou usest, disobey, Expel good motions from thy breast, Which have the face of fire, But end in rest. I, who had heard of music in the spheres, But not of speech and stars, Began to muse. But turning to my God, Whose ministers the stars and all things are, if I refuse, dread Lord, said I, so oft my good, then I refuse not even with blood to wash away my stubborn thought. For I will do, or suffer what I ought. But I have also stars and shooters too, born where thy servants both artilleries use. My tears and prayers night and day do woo and work up to thee. Yet thou dost refuse. Not but I am, I must say still, But more obliged to do thy will Than thou to grant mine. But because thy promise now hath even set thee thy laws. Then we are shooters both, And thou dost deign to enter combat with us, And contest with thine own clay. But I would parley fain, shun not my arrows, and behold my breast. Yet if thou shunnest, I am thine. I must be so, if I am mine. There is no articling with thee. I am but finite, yet thine infinitely. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Church Rents or Schisms by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org Brave Rose, alas, where art thou? In the chair where thou didst lately so triumph and shine, a worm doth sit, whose many feet and hair are the more foul, the more thou wert divine. This, this hath it done, this did bite the root, and bottom of the leaves, which when the wind did once perceive, it blew them under foot, where rude unhallowed steps do crush and grind their beauteous glories, only shreds of thee, and those all bitten in thy chair I see. Why doth my mother blush? Is she the rose, and shows it so? Indeed, Christ's precious blood gave you a colour once, which when your foes thought to let out, the bleeding did you good, and made you look much fresher than before. But when debates and fretting jealousies did worm and work within you more and more, your colour faded, and calamities turned your ruddy into pale and bleak, your health and beauty both began to break. Then did your several parts unloose and start, which when your neighbours saw, like a north wind, they rushed in and cast them in the dirt, where pagans tread. O oh, mother dear and kind, where shall I get my eyes enough to weep? As many eyes as stars, since it is night, and much of Asia and Europe fast asleep, and even all Afric, would at least I might, with these two poor ones lick up all the dew, which falls by night, 
and pour it out for you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Justice by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll O oh, dreadful justice! What a fright and terror was thou of old! When sin and error did show and shape thy looks to me, And through their glass discolour thee, He that did but look up was proud and bold. The dishes of thy balance seemed to gape like two great pits. The beam and scape did like some torturing engine show. Thy hand above did burn and glow, daunting the stoutest hearts, the proudest wits. But now that Christ's pure veil presents the sight, I see no fears. Thy hand is white, thy scales like buckets, which attend and interchangeably descend, lifting to heaven from this well of tears. For where before thou still didst call on me, now I still touch and harp on thee. God's promises hath made thee mine. Why should I justice now decline? Against me there is none, but for me much. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pilgrimage by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Joanna Michael Hoyt. I travelled on, seeing the hill where lay my expectation. A long it was and weary way. The gloomy cave of desperation I left on the one and on the other side the rock of pride. And so I came to Fancy's meadow, strode with many a flower. Fain would I here have made abode, but I was quickened by my hour. So to Care's copse I came, and there got through with much ado. That led me to the wild of passion, which some call the wold, a wasted place, but sometimes rich. Here I was robbed of all my gold, save one good angel, which a friend had tied close to my side. At length I got unto the gladsome hill where lay my hope, where lay my heart, and climbing still when I had gained the brow and top, a lake of brackish waters on the ground was all I found. With that abashed, and struck with many a sting of swarming fears, I fell and cried, Alas, my king, can both the way and end be tears? Yet taking heart I rose, and then perceived I was deceived. My hill was further. So I flung away, yet heard a cry just as I went. None goes that way and lives. If that be all, said I, after so foul a journey death is fair and but a chair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hold Fast by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. I threatened to observe the strict decree of my dear God with all my power and might, but I was told by one it could not be, yet I might trust in God to be my light. Then will I trust, said I, in him alone. Nay, even to trust in him was also his. We must confess that nothing is our own. Then I confess that he my succor be. But to have naught is ours, not to confess that we have naught. I stood amazed at this, much troubled, till I heard a friend express that all things were more ours by being his, what Adam had and forfeited for all. Christ keepeth now, who cannot fail or fall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Complaining by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Do not beguile my heart, because thou art my power and wisdom. Put me not to shame, because I am thy clay that weeps, thy dust that calls. Thou art the Lord of glory, 
the deed and story are both thy due but i a silly fly that live or die according as the weather falls art thou all justice lord shows not thy word more attributes am i all throat or eye to weep or cry have i no parts but those of grief let not thy wrathful power afflict my hour my inch of life or let thy gracious power contract my hour that i may climb and find relief End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Discharge by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Busy inquiring heart, what wouldst thou know? Why dost thou pry and turn and leer and with a liquorous eye look high and low? and in thy looking stretch and grow hast thou not made thy counts and summed up all did not thy heart give up the whole and with the whole depart let what will fall that which is past who can recall thy life is god's thy time to come is gone and is his right he is thy night at noon he is at night thy noon alone the crop is his for he hath sown and well it was for thee when this befell that god did make thy business his and in thy life partake for thou canst tell if it be his once all is well only the present is thy part and fee and happy thou if though thou didst not beat thy future brow thou couldst well see what present things required of thee they ask enough why shouldst thou further go Raise not the mud of future depths, but drink the clear and good. Dig not for woe in times to come, for it will grow. Man and the present fit, if he provide, he breaks the square. This hour is mine, if for the next I care, I grow too wide and do encroach upon death's side. For death each hour environs and surrounds. He that would know and care for future chances cannot go unto those grounds but through a churchyard which them bounds things present shrink and die but they that spend their thoughts and sense on future grief do not remove it thence but it extend and draw the bottom out an end god chains the dog till night wilt loose the chain and wake thy sorrow wilt thou forestall it and thou grieve to-morrow and then again grieve over freshly all thy pain either grief will not come or if it must do not forecast while it cometh it is almost past away distrust my god hath promised he is just end of poem this recording is in the public domain praise by george herbert read for librivox dot org by kevin s king of glory king of peace i will love thee and that love may never cease i will move thee thou hast granted my request thou hast heard me thou didst note my working breast thou hast spared me wherefore with my utmost art i will sing thee and the cream of all my heart i will bring thee though my sins against me cried thou didst clear me and alone when they replied thou didst hear me seven whole days not one in seven i will praise thee in my heart though not in heaven i can raise thee thou grewest soft and moist with tears thou relentest and when justice called for fears thou dissentest small is this poor sort to enroll thee even eternity is too short to extol thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain An Offering by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Come, bring thy gift. If blessings were as slow as men's returns, what would become of fools? What hast thou there, a heart? But is it pure? Search well and see, for hearts have many holes. Yet one pure heart is nothing to bestow, in Christ two natures met to be thy cure. O oh, that within us hearts had propagation, 
since many gifts do challenge many hearts yet one if good may title to a number and single things grow fruitful by deserts in public judgments one may be a nation and fence a plague while others sleep and slumber but all i fear is lest the heart displease as neither good nor one so oft divisions thy lust have made and not thy lusts alone thy passions also have their set partitions these parcel out thy heart recover these and thou mayst offer many gifts in one there is a balsam or indeed a blood dropping from heaven which doth both cleanse and close all sorts of wounds of such strange force it is seek out this all heal and seek no repose until thou find and use it to thy good then bring thy gift and let thy hymn be this since all sadness into gladness lord thou dost convert o oh, accept what thou hast kept as thy due desert had i many had i any for this heart is none all were thine and none of mine surely thine alone yet thy favour may give savour to this poor oblation and it raised to be thy praise and be my salvation end of poem this recording is in the public domain longing by george herbert read for librivox dot org by kevin s with sick and famished eyes with doubling knees and weary bones to thee my cries to thee my groans to thee my sighs my tears ascend no end my throat my soul is hoarse my heart is withered like a ground which thou dost curse my thoughts turn round and make me giddy lord i fall yet call from thee all pity flows mothers are kind because thou art and dost dispose to them apart their infants them and they suck thee more free bowels of pity here lord of my soul love of my mind bow down thine ears let not the wind scatter my words and in the same thy name look on my sorrows round mark well my furnace oh what flames what heats abound what griefs what shames consider lord lord bow thine ear and hear lord jesu thou didst bow thy dying head upon the tree oh be not now more dead to me lord hear shall he that made the ear not hear behold thy dust doth stir it moves it creeps it aims at thee wilt thou defer to succour me thy pile of dust wherein each crumb says come to thee help appertains hast thou left all things to their course and laid the reins upon the horse is all locked hath the sinner's plea no key indeed the world's thy book where all things have their leaf assigned yet a meek look hath interlined thy board is full yet humble guests find nests thou tarriest while i die and fall to nothing thus thou reign and rule on high while i remain in bitter grief yet am i styled thy child lord didst thou leave thy throne not to relieve how can it be that thou art grown thus hard to me were sin alive good cause there were to bear but now both sin is dead and all thy promises live and bide that wants his head thee speak and chide and in thy bosom pour my tears as theirs lord jesu hear my heart which hath been broken now so long that every part hath a tongue thy beggars grow rid them away to-day my love my sweetness here by these thy feet at which my heart lies all the year pluck out thy dart and heal my troubled breast which cries which dies end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bag by george herbert read for librivox dot org by kevin s away despair my gracious lord doth hear though winds and waves assault my keel he doth preserve it 
he doth steer even when the boat seems most to reel storms are the triumph of his art well may he close his eyes but not his heart hast thou not heard that my lord jesus died then let me tell thee a strange story the god of power as he did ride in his majestic robes of glory resolved to light and so one day he did descend undressing all the way the stars his tire of night and rings obtained the cloud his bow the fire his spear the sky his azure mantle gained and when they asked what he would wear he smiled and said as he did go he had new clothes a-making here below when he was come as travellers are wont he did repair unto an inn both then and after many a brunt he did endure to cancel sin and having given the rest before here he gave up his life to pay our score but as he was returning there came one that ran upon him with a spear he who came hither all alone bringing nor men nor arms nor fear received the blow upon his side and straight he turned and to his brethren cried if ye have anything to send or write i have no bag but here is room unto my father's hands and sight believe me it shall safely come that i shall mind what you impart look you may put it very near my heart or if hereafter any of my friends will use me in this kind the door shall still be open what he sends i will present and somewhat more not to his hurt sighs will convey anything to me hark despair away end of poem this recording is in the public domain the jews by george herbert read for librivox dot org by kevin s poor nation whose sweet sap and juice our scions have purloin and left you dry whose strings we got by the apostles loose and use in baptism while ye pine and die who by not keeping once became a debtor and now by keeping lose the letter oh that my prayers mine alas oh that some angel might a trumpet sound at which the church falling upon her face should cry so loud until the trump were drowned and by that cry of her dear lord obtain that your sweet sap might come again end of poem this recording is in the public domain the collar by george herbert read for librivox dot org by kevin s i struck the board and cried no more i will abroad what shall i ever sigh and pine my lines and life are free free as the road loose as the wind as large as store shall i be still in suit have i no harvest but a thorn to let me blood and not restore what i have lost with cordial fruit sure there was wine before my sighs did dry it there was corn before my tears did drown it is the year only lost to me have i no bays to crown it no flowers no garlands gay all blasted all wasted not so my heart but there is fruit and thou hast hands recover all thy sigh-blown age on double pleasures leave thy cold dispute of what is fit and not forsake thy cage thy rope of sands which petty thoughts have made and made to thee good cable to enforce and draw and be thy law while well, thou didst wink and wouldst not see away take heed i will abroad call in thy death's head there tie up thy fears he that forbears to suit and serve his need deserves his load but as i raved and grew more fierce and wild at every word methought i heard one calling child and i replied my lord end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Glimpse by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Whither away, delight? Thou camest but now. Wilt thou so soon depart and give me up to-night? 
for how many weeks of lingering pain and smart but one half hour of comfort for my heart methinks delight should have more skill in music and keep better time wert thou a wind or wave they quickly go and come with lesser crime flowers look about and die not in their prime thy short abode and stay feeds not but adds to the desire of meat lime begged of old they say a neighbor's spring to cool his inward heat which by the spring's access grew much more great in hope of thee my heart picked here and there a crumb and would not die but constant to his part when as my fears foretold this did reply a slender thread a gentle guest will tie yet if the heart that wept must let thee go return when it doth knock although thy heap be kept for future times the droppings of the stock may oft break forth and never break the lock if i have more to spin the wheel shall go so that thy stay be short thou knowest how grief and sin disturb the work o make me not their sport who by thy coming may be made a court End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Assurance by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox by Beeswax Candle. Assurance. O oh, spiteful, bitter thought, bitterly spiteful thought, couldst thou invent so high a torture? Is such poison bought? Doubtless but in the way of punishment. When wit contrives to meet with thee, no such rank poison can there be. Thou saidst but even now that all was not so fair as I conceived betwixt my God and me. That I allow and coin large hopes, but that I was deceived. Either the league was broke or near it, and that I had great cause to fear it. And what to this? What more could poison, if it had a tongue express? What is thy aim? Wouldst thou unlock the door to cold despairs and gnawing pensiveness? Wouldst thou raise devils? I see, I know, I writ thy purpose long ago. But I will to my father, who heard thee say it, O most gracious Lord, if all the hope and comfort that I gather were from myself, I had not half a word, not half a letter to oppose what is objected by my foes. But thou art my desert, and in this league, which now my foes invade, thou art not only to perform thy part, but also mine, as when the league was made. Thou didst at once thyself indite, and hold my hand while I did write. Wherefore, if thou canst fail, then can thy truth and I. But while rocks stand and rivers stir, thou canst not shrink or quail. Yea, when both rocks and all things shall disband, then shalt thou be my rock and tower, and make their ruin praise thy power. Now, foolish thought, go on, spin out thy thread, and make thereof a coat to hide thy shame, for thou hast cast a bone which bounds on thee, it will not down thy throat. What for itself love once began, now love and truth will end in man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Call by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox by Beeswax Candle. The Call. Come my way, my truth, my life. Such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as killeth death. Come, my light, my feast, my strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast as mends in length, such a strength as makes his guest. Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy as none can move, such a love as none can part, such a heart as joys in love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Clasping of Hands by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Beeswax Candle Clasping of Hands Lord, thou art mine, and I am thine, if mine I am. 
and thine much more than I or ought or can be mine. Yet to be thine doth me restore, so that again I now am mine, and with advantage mine the more, since this being mine brings with it thine, and thou with me dost thee restore. If I without thee would be mine, I neither should be mine nor thine. Lord, I am thine, and thou art mine, so mine thou art, that something more I may presume thee mine than thine. For thou didst suffer to restore not thee, but me, and to be mine, and with advantage mine the more, since thou in death was none of thine, yet then as mine didst me restore. Now oh, be mine still, still make me thine, or rather make no thine and mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Praise by George Herbert Read for LibriVox by Beeswax Candle Praise Lord, I will mean and speak thy praise, thy praise alone. My busy heart shall spin it all my days, and when it stops for want of store, then will I ring it with a sigh or groan, that thou mayst yet have more. When thou dost favour any action, it runs, it flies. All things concur to give it a perfection. That which had but two legs before, when thou dost bless, hath twelve. One wheel doth rise to twenty then, or more. But when thou dost on business blow, it hangs, it clogs. Not all the teams of Albion in a row can hail or draw it out of door. Legs are but stumps, and Pharaoh's wheels but logs, and struggling hinders more. Thousands of things do thee employ in ruling all this spacious globe. Angels must have their joy, devils their rod, the sea his shore, the winds their stint. And yet when I did call, thou heardst my call, and more. I have not lost one single tear. But when mine eyes did weep to heaven, they found a bottle there, as we have boxes for the poor, ready to take them in yet of a size that would contain much more. But after thou had slipped a drop from thy right eye, which there did hang like streamers near the top of some fair church, to show the sore and bloody battle which thou once didst try, the glass was full and more. Wherefore I sing, yet since my heart, though pressed, runs thin, Oh, that I might some other hearts convert, and so take up at use good store, that to thy chests there might be coming in both all my praise and more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Joseph's Coat by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Beeswax Candle Joseph's Coat Wounded I sing, tormented I indite, Thrown down I fall into a bed and rest. Sorrow hath changed its note, Such as his will who changeth all things As him pleaseth best. For well he knows, if but one grief and smart Among my many had his full career, Sure it would carry with it even my heart, And both would run to their found a beer To fetch the body, both being due to grief. But he hath spoiled the race, and given to anguish one of joy's coats, ticing it with relief to linger in me and together languish. I live to show his power, who once did bring my joys to weep, and now my griefs to sing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pulley by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Beeswax Candle The Pulley When God at first made man, having a glass of blessing standing by, Let us, said he, pour on him all we can. Let the world's riches which dispersed lie, contract into a span. So strength first made away, then beauty flowed, then wisdom, honour, pleasure. When almost all was out, God made a stay. Perceiving that, to loan of all his treasure, rest in the bottom lay. 
For if I should, said he, bestow this jewel also on my creature, he would adore my gifts instead of me, and rest in nature, not the god of nature, so both should losers be. Yet let him keep the rest, but keep them with repining restlessness. Let him be rich and weary, that at least if goodness lead him not, yet weariness may toss him to my breast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Priesthood by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Beeswax Candle The Priesthood Blessed order which in power dost so excel, That with the one hand thou liftest to the sky, And with the other thou throwest down to hell in thy just censures. Fain would I draw nigh, fain put thee on, Exchanging my lay sword for that of the holy word. But thou art fire, Sacred and hallowed fire, and I but earth and clay. Should I presume to wear thy habit, the severe attire my slender compositions might consume? I am both foul and brittle, much unfit to deal in holy writ. Yet have I often seen, by cunning hand and force of fire, what curious things are made of wretched earth. Where once I scorned to stand, that earth is fitted by the fire and trade of skilful artists for the boards of those who make the bravest shows. But since those great ones, be they ne'er so great, come from the earth, from whence those vessels come, so that at once both feeder, dish, and meat have one beginning and one final sum, I do not greatly wonder at the sight, if earth in earth delight. But the holy men of God such vessels are, as serve him up who all the world commands. When God vouchsafeth to become our fair, their hands convey him who conveys their hands. O oh, what pure things, most pure must those things be, who bring my God to me. Wherefore I dare not, I put forth my hand to hold the ark, although it seemed to shake through the old sins and new doctrines of our land. Only, since God doth often vessels make of lowly matter for high use as meat, I throw me at his feet. There will I lie until my maker seek for some mean stuff whereon to show his skill. Then is my time. The distance of the meek doth flatter power. Lest good come short of ill in praising might, the poor do by submission what pride by opposition. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Search by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll Whither, O oh, whither art thou fled, my lord, my love? My searches are my daily bread, yet never prove. My knees pierce the earth, mine eyes the sky, And yet the sphere and centre both to me deny That thou art there. Yet can I mark how herbs below grow green and gay, As if to meet thee they did know, while I decay. Yet can I mark how stars above simper and shine, As having keys unto thy love, while poor I pine. I sent a sigh to seek thee out, deep drawn in pain, winged like an arrow, but my scout returns in vain. I tuned another, having store, into a groan, because the search was dumb before, but all was one. Lord, Dost thou some new fabric mold which favor wins, And keeps thee present, leaving the old unto their sins? Where is my God? What hidden place conceals thee still? What covert dare eclipse thy face? Is it thy will? O oh, let not that of anything, let rather brass, or steel, or mountains be thy ring, and I will pass. 
thy will such an entrenching is as passeth thought to it all strength all subtleties are things of naught thy will such a strange distance is as that to it east and west touch the poles do kiss and parallels meet since then my grief must be as large as is thy space thy distance from me see my charge lord see my case o oh, take these bars these lengths away turn and restore me be not almighty let me say against but for me when thou dost turn and wilt be near what edge so keen what point so piercing can appear to come between for as thy absence doth excel all distance known so doth thy nearness bear the bell making two one end of poem this recording is in the public domain Grief by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll Oh, who will give me tears? Come, all ye springs, dwell in my head and eyes. Come, clouds and rain. My grief hath need of all the watery things that nature hath produced. Let every vein suck up a river to supply mine eyes, my weary weeping eyes too dry for me unless they get new conduits new supplies to bear them out and with my state agree what are two shallow fords two little spouts of a less world the greater is but small a narrow cupboard for my griefs and doubts which want provision in the midst of all Verses, ye are too fine a thing, too wise for my rough sorrows. Cease, be dumb and mute, give up your feet and running to mine eyes, and keep your measures for some lover's lute, whose grief allows him music and a rhyme, for mine excludes both measure, tune, and time. Alas, my God! End of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Cross by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll What is this strange and uncouth thing To make me sigh and seek and faint and die? until i had some place where i might sing and serve thee and not only i but all my wealth and family might combine to set thy honour up as our design and then when after much delay much wrestling many a combat this dear end so much desired is given to take away my power to serve thee to unbend all my abilities, my designs confound, and lay my threatenings bleeding on the ground. One egg dwelleth in my bones, another in my soul. The memory what I would do for thee, if once my groans could be allowed for harmony. I am in all a weak, disabled thing, save in the sight thereof, where strength doth sting. Besides, things sort not to my will, even when my will doth study thy renown. Thou turnest the edge of all things on me still, taking me up to throw me down. So that even when my hopes seem to be sped, I am to grief alive, to them as dead. To have my aim and yet to be farther from it than when I bent my bow, to make my hopes, my torture, and the fee of all my woes, 
another woe is in the midst of delicates to need, and even in paradise to be a weed. Ah, my dear father, ease my smart. These contrarieties crush me. These cross actions do wind a rope about and cut my heart. And yet, since these thy contradictions are properly a cross felt by thy son, with but four words, my words, thy will be done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Flower by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll How fresh, O Lord, how sweet and clean are thy returns, Even as the flowers in spring, To which, besides their own demean, The late past frosts tributes of pleasure bring. Grief melts away like snow in May, as if there were no such cold thing. Who would have thought my shriveled heart could have recovered greenness? It was gone quite underground, as flowers depart to see their mother root when they have blown, where they together, all the hard weather, dead to the world, keep house unknown. These are thy wonders, Lord of power, killing and quickening, bringing down to hell and up to heaven in an hour, making a chiming of a passing bell. We say amiss this or that is, thy word is all, if we could spell. Oh, that I once past changing were fast in thy paradise, where no flower can wither, Many a spring I shoot up fair, offering at heaven, growing and groaning thither. Nor doth my flower want a spring shower, my sins and I joining together. But while I grow in a straight line, still upwards bent, as if heaven were mine own, thy anger comes, and I decline. What frost to that? What pole is not the zone where all things burn, when thou dost turn, and the least frown of thine is shown? And now in age I bud again, after so many deaths I live and write, I once more smell the dew and rain and relish versing. O oh, my only light! It cannot be that I am he on whom thy tempests fell all night. These are thy wonders, Lord of love, to make us see we are but flowers that glide, which when we once can find and prove, thou hast a garden for us where to bide. Who would be more, swelling through store, forfeit their paradise, by their pride. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dotage by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll. False glozing pleasures, casks of happiness. Foolish night fires, women's and children's wishes, chases in aras, gilded emptiness, shadows well mounted, dreams in a career, embroidered lies, nothing between two dishes. These are the pleasures here. True earnest sorrows, rooted miseries, anguish in grain. Vexations ripe and blown, sure-footed griefs, solid calamities, plain demonstrations evident and clear, fetching their proofs even from the very bone. These are the sorrows here. 
But oh, the folly of distracted men, whose griefs in earnest joys in jest pursue, preferring, like brute beasts, a loathsome den before a court, even that above so clear where are no sorrows, but delights more true than miseries are here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sun by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Let foreign nations of their language boast what fine variety each tongue affords. I like our language, as our men and coast, who cannot dress it well, want wit, not words. How neatly do we give one only name to parents issue and the sun's bright star. A sun is light and fruit, a fruitful flame, chasing the father's dimness, carried far from the first man in the east to fresh and new western discoveries of posterity. So in one word, our Lord's humility, we turn upon him in a sense most true. For what Christ once in humbleness began, we him in glory call the Son of Man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A True Hymn by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll My joy, my life, my crown! My heart was meaning all the day, Somewhat it fain would say, And still it runneth muttering up and down, With only this, my joy, my life, my crown! Yet slight not these few words, if truly said, they may take part among the best in art. The finesse which a hymn or psalm affords is when the soul unto the lines accords. He who craves all the mind and all the soul and strength and time, if the words only rhyme, justly complains that somewhat is behind to make his verse or write a hymn in kind. Whereas, if the heart be moved, although the verse be somewhat scant, God doth supply the want, as when the heart says, sighing to be approved, Oh, could I love, and stops, God writeth, loved. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Answer by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org My comforts drop and melt like snow. I shake my head, and all the thoughts and ends which my fierce youth did bandy fall and flow like leaves about me, or like summer friends, flies of estates and sunshine. But to all who think me eager, hot, and undertaking, but in my prosecutions slack and small, as a young exhalation newly waking scorns his first bed of dirt and means the sky but cooling by the way grows pursy and slow and settling to a cloud doth live and die in that dark state of tears to all that so show me and set me i have one reply which they that know the rest know more than I. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Dialogue Anthem by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll Christian Alas, poor death! Where is thy glory? Where is thy famous force, thy ancient sting? Death. 
Alas, poor mortal, void of story. Go spell and read how I have killed thy king. Christian, poor death, and who was hurt thereby? Thy curse being laid on him makes thee accursed. Death, let losers talk, yet thou shalt die. These arms shall crush thee. Christian, spare not, do thy worst. I shall be one day better than before. Thou so much worse, that thou shalt be no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Watercourse by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll Thou who dost dwell and linger here below, Since the condition of this world is frail, Where of all plants afflictions soonest grow, If troubles overtake thee, do not wail. For who can look for less that loveth life, strife. But rather turn the pipe and water's course to serve thy sins, and furnish thee with store of sovereign tears springing from true remorse, that so in pureness thou mayst him adore, who gives to man, as he sees fit, salvation, damnation. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Self Condemnation by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll. Thou who condemnest Jewish hate for choosing Barabbas a murderer before the Lord of glory. Look back upon thine own estate. Call home thine eye, that busy wanderer. That choice may be thy story. He that doth love, and love amiss, This world's delights before true Christian joy, Hath made a Jewish choice. The world an ancient murderer is, Thousands of souls it hath and doth destroy with her enchanting voice. He that hath made a sorry wedding between his soul and gold, and hath preferred false gain before the true, hath done what he condemns in reading, for he hath sold for money his dear Lord, and is a Judas Jew. Thus we prevent the last great day, and judge ourselves. That light which sin and passion did before dim and choke, when once those snuffs are ta'en away, shines bright and clear, even unto condemnation, without excuse or cloak. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bittersweet by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Noreen Ah, my dear angry lord, Since thou dost love, yet strike, Cast down, yet help afford, Sure, I will do the like. I will complain, yet praise, I will bewail, approve, and all my sour sweet days I will lament and love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Glance by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. When first thy sweet and gracious eye vouchsafed, even in the mist of youth and night, to look upon me, who before did lie weltering in sin. I felt a sugared strange delight 
passing all cordials made by any art bedew and balm and overrun my heart and take it in since that time many a bitter storm my soul hath felt even able to destroy at the malicious and ill-meaning harm his swing and sway but still thy sweet original joy sprung from thine eye did work within my soul and surging griefs when they grew bold controlled and got the day if thy first glance so powerful be a mirth but opened and sealed up again what wonder shall we feel when we shall see thee full-eyed love when thou shalt look us out of pain and one aspect of thine spendent delight more than a thousand suns disperse in light in heaven above end of poem this recording is in the public domain the twenty-third psalm by george herbert read for librivox dot org by chris m the god of love my shepherd is and he that doth me feed while he is mine and i am his what can i want or need he leads me to the tender grass where i both feed and rest then to the streams that gently pass in both i have the best or if i stray he doth convert and bring my mind in frame and all this not for my desert but for his holy name yea in death's shady black abode well may i walk not fear for thou art with me and thy rod to guide thy staff to bear nay thou dost make me sit and dine even in my enemy's sight my head with oil my cup with wine runs over day and night surely thy sweet and wondrous love shall measure all my days and as it never shall remove so neither shall my praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain mary magdalene by george herbert read for librivox dot org by suzanne carroll when blessed mary wiped her saviour's feet whose precepts she had trampled on before and wore them for a jewel on her head showing his steps should be the street wherein she thenceforth evermore with pensive humbleness would live and tread she being stained herself why did she strive to make him clean who could not be defiled why kept she not her tears for her own faults and not his feet though we could dive in tears like seas our sins are piled deeper than they in words and works and thoughts dear soul she knew who did vouchsafe and deign to bear her filth and that her sins did dash even god himself wherefore she was not loath as she had brought wherewith to stain so to bring in wherewith to wash and yet in washing one she washed both end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Aaron by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll Holiness on the head Light and perfections on the breast Harmonious bells below raising the dead to lead them unto life and rest thus are true errands dressed profaneness in my head defects and darkness in my breast a noise of passions ringing me for dead unto a place where is no rest poor priest thus am i dressed 
only another head I have, another heart and breast, another music making live, not dead, without whom I could have no rest. In him I am well dressed. Christ is my only head, my alone only heart and breast, my only music striking me even dead, that to the old man I may rest and be in him new dressed. So, holy in my head, perfect and light in my dear breast, my doctrine tuned by Christ, who is not dead, but lives in me while I do rest. Come, people, Aaron's dressed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Odor by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll How sweetly doth my master sound! My master! As amber grease leaves a rich scent unto the taster, so do these words a sweet content, an oriental fragrance. My master! With these all day I do perfume my mind, my mind even thrust into them both, that I might find what cordials make this curious broth, this broth of smells that feeds and fats my mind. My master, shall I speak? Oh, that to thee my servant were a little so, as flesh may be that these two words might creep and grow to some degree of spiciness to thee. Then should the pulmonder, which was before a speaking sweet, mend by reflection and tell me more. For pardon of my imperfection would warm and work it sweeter than before. For when my master, which alone is sweet, and even in my unworthiness pleasing, shall call and meet my servant as thee not displeasing. That call is but the breathing of the sweet. This breathing would with gains, by sweetening me, as sweet things traffic when they meet, return to thee. And so this new commerce and sweet should all my life employ and busy me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Foil by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll If we could see below the sphere of virtue and each shining grace, as plainly as that above doth show, this were the better sky, the brighter place. God hath made stars the foil to set off virtues, griefs to set off sinning. Yet in this wretched world we toil, as if grief were not foul, nor virtue winning. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Forerunners by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone The harbingers are come, see, see their mark. White is their colour, and behold my head. But must they have my brain? Must they dispark Those sparkling notions which therein were bred? Must dullness turn me to a clod? Yet have they left me, thou art still my God. Good men ye be to leave me my best room, Even all my heart and what is lodged there. I pass not, I, what of the rest become, So thou art still my God, be out of fear, He will be pleased with that ditty, 
as if i please him i write fine and witty farewell sweet phrases lovely metaphors but will ye leave me thus when ye before of stews and brothels only knew the doors then did i wash you with my tears and more brought you to church well dressed and clad my god must have my best even all i had lovely enchanting language sugar cane honey of roses whither wilt thou fly hath some fond lover tied thee to thy bane and wilt thou leave the church and love a sty fie thou wilt soil thy broidered coat and hurt thyself and him that sings the note let foolish lovers if they will love dung with canvas not with arras clothe their shame let folly speak in her own native tongue true beauty dwells on high ours is a flame but borrowed thence to light us thither beauty and beauteous words should go together yet if you go i pass not take your way for thou art still my god is all that ye perhaps with more embellishment can say go birds of spring let winter have his fee let a bleak paleness chalk the door so all within be livelier than before end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rose by george herbert read for librivox dot org press me not to take more pleasure in this world of sugared lies and to use a larger measure than my strict yet welcome size first there is no pleasure here colored griefs indeed there are blushing woes that look as clear as if they could beauty spare or if such deceits there be such delights i meant to say there are no such things to me who have passed my right away but i will not much oppose unto what you now advise only take this gentle rose and therein my answer lies what is fairer than a rose what is sweeter yet it purgeth purging's enmity disclose enmity forbearance urgeth if then all that worldlings prize be contracted to a rose sweetly there indeed it lies but it biteth in the close so this flower doth judge and sentence worldly joys to be a scourge for they all produce repentance and repentance is a purge but i health not physic choose only though i you oppose say that fairly i refuse for my answer is a rose End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Discipline by George Herbert. Read for LibriVox.org by James Martin. Throw away thy rod, throw away thy wrath. O oh my God, take the gentle path. For my heart's desire unto thine is bent. I aspire to a full consent. Not a word or look I affect to own, but by book, and thy book alone. Though I fail, I weep. Though I halt in pace, yet I creep to the throne of grace. Then let wrath remove, love will do the deed. For with love, stony hearts will bleed. Love is swift of foot, Love's a man of war, 
and can shoot and can hit from far. Who can scape his bow? That which wrought on thee brought thee low. Needs must work on me. Throw away thy rod. Though man frailties hath, thou art God. Throw away thy wrath. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Invitation by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Come ye hither, all whose taste is your waste. Save your cost and mend your fare. God is here prepared and dressed, and the feast God in whom all dainties are. Come ye hither, all whom wine doth define. Name ye you not to your good. Weep what ye have drunk amiss, and drink this, which before ye drink is blood. Come ye hither, all whom pain doth arraign. Bring all your sins to sight. Taste and fear not. God is here, in this cheer, and on sin doth cast the fright. Come ye hither, all whom joy doth destroy, while ye graze without your bounds. Here is joy that drowneth quite your delight, as a flood the lower grounds. Come ye hither, all whose love is your dove, and exalts you to the sky. Here is love which, having breath even in death, after death can never die. Lord, I have invited all, and I shall still invite, still call to thee, for it seems but just and right in my sight, where is all there all should be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Banquet by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Suzanne Carroll Welcome, sweet and sacred cheer, welcome, dear. With me, in me, live and dwell, for thy neatness passeth sight, thy delight passeth tongue to taste or tell. Oh, what sweetness from the bowl fills my soul, such as is and makes divine. Is some star fled from the sphere, melted there, as we sugar melt in wine? Or hath sweetness in the bread made a head to subdue the smell of sin, flowers and gums and powders giving all their living, lest the enemy should win? Doubtless neither star nor flower hath the power such a sweetness to impart. Only God, who gives perfumes, flesh assumes, and with it perfumes my heart. But as pomanders and wood still are good, yet being bruised are better scented. God, to show how far his love could improve, here as broken is presented. When I had forgot my birth, and on earth in delights of earth was drowned, God took blood, and needs would be spilt with me and so found me on the ground, having raised me to look up in a cup, sweetly he doth meet my taste, but I still being low and short, far from court, wine becomes a wing at last, for with it alone I fly to the sky, where I weep mine eyes, and see what I seek for, what I sue, him I view, who hath done so much for me. Let the wonder of this pity be my ditty, and take up my lines and life, hearken under pain of death, hands and breath, strive in this, and love the strife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Posy by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Let wits contest, and with their words and posies windows fill. 
less than the least of all thy mercies is my posy still this on my ring this by my picture in my book i write whether i sing or say or dictate this is my delight invention rest comparisons go play wit use thy will less than the least of all god's mercies is my posy still end of poem this recording is in the public domain a parody by george herbert read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone soul's joy when thou art gone and i alone which cannot be because thou dost abide with me and i depend on thee yet when thou dost suppress the cheerfulness of thy abode and in my powers not stirred abroad but leave me to my load o oh, what a damp and shade doth me invade no stormy night can so afflict or so affright as thy eclipsed light ah lord do not withdraw lest want of all make sin appear and when thou dost but shine less clear say that thou art not here and then what life i have while sin doth rave and falsely boast that i may seek but thou art lost thou and alone thou knowest o oh, what a deadly cold doth me infold i half believe that sin says true but while i grieve thou comest and dost relieve End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Elixir by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Teach me, my God and King, in all things thee to see, and what I do in any thing, I do it as for thee not rudely as a beast to run into an action but still to make thee prepossessed and give it his perfection a man that looks on glass on it may stay his eye or if he pleaseth through it pass and then the heaven espy all may of thee partake nothing can be so mean which with his tincture for thy sake will not grow bright and clean a servant with this clause makes drudgery divine who sweeps a room as for thy laws makes that and the action fine this is the famous stone that turneth all to gold for that which god doth touch and own cannot for less be told End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Wreath by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone A wreathed garland of deserved praise, Of praise deserved unto thee I give, I give to thee, who knowest all my ways my crooked winding ways wherein i live wherein i die not live for life is straight straight as a line and ever tends to thee to thee who art more fair above deceit than deceit seems above simplicity give me simplicity that i may live so live and like that i may know thy ways know them and practise them then shall i give for this poor wreath give thee a crown of praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain death 
by George Herbert, read for LibriVox.org. Death, thou was once an uncouth, hideous thing, nothing but bones. The sad effect of sadder groans, thy mouth was open, but thou couldst not sing. For we considered thee, as at some six or ten years hence, after loss of life and sense, flesh being turned to dust and bones to sticks, we looked on the side of thee, shooting short, where we did find the shells of fledged souls left behind, dry dust, which sheds no tears but may extort, but since our Saviour's death did put some blood into thy face, thou art grown fair, and full of grace, much in request, much sought for as a good. For do we now behold thee, gay and glad, as at doomsday, when souls shall wear their new array, and all thy bones with beauty shall be clad. Therefore we can go die asleep, and trust half that we have unto an honest, faithful grave, making our pillows either down or dust. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Doomsday by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Come away, make no delay, Summon all the dust to rise, Till it steer and rub the eyes. While this member jogs the other, Each one whispering, Live you, brother? Come away, make this the day, Dust, alas, no music feels, But thy trumpet. Then it kneels, as peculiar notes and strains Cure tarantula's raging pains. Come away, O oh, make no stay, Let the graves make their confession, Lest at length they plead possession, Flesh's stubbornness may have Read that lesson to the grave. Come away, thy flock doth stray, some to the winds their bodies lend and in them may drown a friend some in noisome vapours grow to a plague and public woe come away help our decay man is out of order hurled parcelled out to all the world lord thy broken comfort raise and the music shall be praise End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Judgment by George Herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Almighty Judge, how shall poor wretches brook Thy dreadful look, able a heart of iron to appall when thou shalt call for every man's peculiar book what others mean to do i know not well yet i hear tell that some will turn thee to some leaves therein to void of sin that they in merit shall excel but i resolve when thou shalt call for mine that to decline and thrust a testament into thy hand let that be scanned there thou shalt find my faults are thine end of poem this recording is in the public domain heaven by george herbert Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Oh, who will show me those delights on high? I. Thou echo, thou art mortal, all men know. No. Wert thou not born among the trees and leaves? Leaves. And are there any leaves that still abide? Bide. What leaves are they? Impart the matter wholly. Holy. Are holy leaves the echo, then, of bliss? Yes. Then tell me, what is that supreme delight? Light. Light to the mind, what shall the will enjoy? Joy. But are there cares and business with the pleasure? Leisure. 
light joy and leisure but shall they persever ever end of poem this recording is in the public domain love by george herbert read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone love bade me welcome yet my soul drew back guilty of dust and sin but quick-eyed love observing me grow slack from my first entrance in drew nearer to me sweetly questioning if i lacked any thing a guest i answered worthy to be here love said you shall be he i the unkind ungrateful ah my dear i cannot look on thee love took my hand and smiling did reply who made the eyes but i truth lord but i have marred them let my shame go where it doth deserve and know you not says love who bore the blame my dear then i will serve you must sit down says love and taste my meat so i did sit and eat finis glory be to god on high and on earth peace good will towards men end of poem this recording is in the public domain End of the Temple by George Herbert